In 1938, a four-year-old boy named Alfred was camping with his family in Colorado's Rocky Mountain National Park. And as the boy was walking with his family, he disappeared. He was there one minute, and the next he was gone. The authorities were convinced that he must have fell into the river as they were walking pretty close to it. And that theory could explain why Alfred didn't answer any of his parents' calls as maybe he drowned or got swept away by the river. But Alfred's parents insisted that this was not the case, and they kept telling the authorities that he had just vanished. And that day a massive search was launched, and they searched up and down the river and all throughout the national park for about five days. But there was just no sign or any evidence of Alfred anywhere. So they called off the search. But something rather interesting did happen on the first day of the search when bloodhounds were called in. The bloodhounds picked up the young boy's scent right away, but they mysteriously stopped right at the exact location where Alfred disappeared. And the dogs did show some very strange behavior. Now this disappearance was all over the news and the police got a strange phone call from a couple who claimed that they had seen Alfred where they were hiking at the national park. The couple told the cops and the park rangers that while they were hiking at about 3,000 feet higher than where Alfred went missing, they saw a boy perched on a very high ridge known as the Devil's Nest. And the couple were just looking at this boy in total awe as they were extremely curious how a boy that young could get up there as even experienced hikers have a very hard time getting to that ridge. Then they saw someone or something jerking the boy back out of their view. And that very night, they saw Alfred's face all over the news and they were convinced that this was the same boy. So a search and rescue team was dispatched to this location, but there was just no sign of Alfred anywhere. And the park rangers told the boy's parents that there was just no way that their son could have climbed up that ridge all alone or with help or reached that destination within that time period. Now despite years of searching, not one bit of evidence of Alfred has ever been found. And what makes this case so mysterious is how the bloodhounds just stopped right at the location where Alfred disappeared, as well as the couple's story as they were convinced that they saw Alfred. Now some believe that this could have been the work of some unknown big bird, such as we have discussed in some of my previous videos, and some believe that something more sinister is to blame. Another very interesting case happened in 1999 when a three-year-old boy named Jared was staying with his father at a Christian camp in Colorado. And Jared and 12 other Christian group members were hiking on the Big South Trail when Jared somehow managed to stray away from the group. And some fishermen told the authorities that they had seen Jared. And this little three-year-old boy asked them if they had seen any bears around. Now these fishermen told this young lad that he should get back to his group. And it's a shame that they didn't escort him as they were the last people to see young Jared alive. And everybody was searching for him but there was just no trace of Jared anywhere. The bloodhounds couldn't pick up a scent and the helicopters couldn't find him and nobody could find any clues or any tracks. So the ones in charge of the investigation believed that Jared must have fell and drowned in the river just like Alfred. And a couple of days later the search was called off. But four years later they did find his body. Jared's remains were found in a very remote and difficult area to get to and his body was found really close to the trail where he was last seen but it was about 500 feet above. And there was just no way that Jared could have walked up there all by himself or with help. And when experts examined the boy's body, they did find scratch marks on his cranium, making them believe at that time that he was attacked by a mountain lion. But many disagree with that statement as this did not fit a mountain lion attack and a mountain lion or any other land predator wouldn't have been able to drag Jared's body to that location. Now after further examination, they concluded that these scratch marks did not match any known animal. And that statement did come from one of the experts who was assigned to the case, according to Missing 411. And what was even more strange as the boy's clothes were turned inside out and his clothes and shoes were surprisingly fresh and clean, as if Jared had only been lying there for a couple of weeks or days, well at least in regards to his clothes, making this another very sad but very mysterious case. Then in 1992, a 12-year-old Kenny Miller went missing in Yosemite National Park while hiking with his family on the Pacific Crest Trail. Now Kenny was a special boy and he was last seen throwing pebbles into a creek and his parents were very close by and they only took their eyes off Kenny for a minute or so before they realized that he was gone. And after a long search, they couldn't find any trace of the young man anywhere. But about a month later, some hikers did find Kenny's body on a very difficult to get to ridge. And this ridge was about 1500 feet higher than where he was last seen. And yet again, there was just no way that Kenny a mentally challenged young man could have got there on his own. And the cause of his death 
was officially stated as exposure, but many believe that something else must have happened to Kenny. Then in Oregon, a two-year-old boy went missing in the forest, and this boy was found 19 hours later and about 12 miles away. And the interesting thing about this case is, there was just no way that a two-year-old could have covered that terrain, as it would have been extremely difficult for an adult. So the obvious suspect was an animal or predator, but there was just no signs of any real distress on the boy's body ruling that theory out. So how the heck did he get there? Another very strange disappearance happened in Arizona when a seven-year-old boy went missing and bloodhounds were quickly on the case, but the dogs were unable to pick up any scent, which is very unusual for bloodhounds. But thankfully, this case has a happy ending as he was found two days later, about 20 miles away and right in the middle of the desert. Now this seven-year-old was very dazed and confused, but in remarkably great condition. He showed no signs of any dehydration and no negative effects whatsoever, which in reality is impossible. As one hour in the desert, he would be extremely dehydrated, and also during that time, the nighttime temperatures were below freezing. So how could this young man be completely unfazed by the scorching desert and the below freezing nights? Now something unknown has to be going on here, and in most of these cases, and I would not say for 100% certainty, but it does seem like these children were taken from the air. But the last case might suggest something else. And my good buddy Scott reminded me that most of these children were wearing very bright clothing. Now whatever the case may be, this is one of the world's greatest mysteries as there are just so many young children and people who go missing throughout the world. And in these type of unusual or supernatural like cases, it does not seem to be caused by man or any known animal. And it also seems that the government knows what is going on, or at least that they know something, but for whatever reason, they're not telling us, only making us more scared and also making us believe that something unknown, something paranormal, must be going on here. Until next time, this is Paranormal Junkie. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned.